Happy New Zealand Day. What? Yes. This kind of snuck up on us. Sorry we don't have anything else planned for <laughs> New Zealand Day. Yeah. yeah. We're going to check out Geography Now's video on New Zealand. Why not? This will get the ball rolling. Oh, so, right. for our New Zealand fans, let's... Let's, let's talk uh, about it. Let's talk about it. One word seems to come to mind. Tao matafaka tangi hanga ko au au o tamatea tsuri pu kaka piki maonga horo nuku pokai fenua kita natahu. What? Or New Zealand. <laughs> it's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. New Zealand is one of those places where a few people have made a powerful image for themselves. It's one of the last places on earth to be discovered and inhabited by humans. And when they arrived, it was unlike anything anyone had ever seen. Mostly because there were these massive 12 feet tall bird monsters. We'll get into that in a bit, but first. <laughs> New Zealand is not only a key player in the ocean nations, but a geographic anomaly. As in half the time when you look at artwork or decorations or newscasts or even educational books, New Zealand is forgotten from the map. <laughs> Kiwis even joke about it. Even their government website 404 page not found website pokes fun at it. Anyway, New Zealand- I love that. Outdoor... <laughs> you have my respect. <laughs> you have my respect. If you can even openly joke about it, yeah, that's points in my book right there. I love that. It uh, might be a conspiracy. Does New I've Zealand never, even exist? I've never met anyone from there. Therefore, who knows if it exists? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Roa is located in the southwestern Pacific Ocean, about 1,200 miles or 2,000 kilometers off the coast of Australia, and about 600 miles or 1,000 kilometers from the nearest major islands of Fiji, Tonga, and New Caledonia. Meaning, technically, France is their closest neighbor. The country is what? made up of two what? main large islands. No. Wait, what? France? I guess one of those islands must be a French territory. Okay, cool. So cool, because I was like, okay, I'm I'm way lost now. Yes, <laughs> seriously. Okay, cool. Islands, aptly named the North Island or Teika a Maui, which makes up about 42% of the landmass, yet holds about three quarters of the population, and the larger yet less populated South Island or Te Waipo Namu at about 56% of the landmass. The remaining two ish percent of the landmass is made up of hundreds of interior and outlying islands, 33 main ones that are either around the main two islands, like the largest one, Stewart Island, just south of South Island. Then you have the outlying island chains, like the northernmost Kermadec Islands, the easternmost Chatham Islands, and the sub Antarctic southernmost point, the Campbell Islands. The country is a unitary state divided into 16 councils, 11 regional councils, and 5 unitary regional councils. The Chatham Islands act as their own special territorial authority. The second largest city, Wellington, is the capital, the southernmost capital in the world. However, Auckland up north is the largest city, which holds about a third of the entire population of the country, with the largest and busiest airport, Auckland International. Otherwise, Christchurch on South Island is the third largest city and holds the second busiest airport, Christchurch International. But wait! But before we get into that, is Wellington uh, the inspiration of the dish Beef Wellington? Interesting. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do know that. Yeah. And, and while we're asking, I think something has arose. What's that? Lately. Is that New Zealand and all this is part of a recently discovered continental shelf. Oh. See? It's like a sunken continent yeah hmm. so anyway let us know let us know <laughs> that's not all the sovereignty claim extends even further and then you get the three new zealand realm territories and free association island nations these what? are tokelau the cook islands and niue tokelau is considered a non-self-governing dependent territory it also has a territorial dispute with american samoa over swain's island whereas the cook islands and niue are labeled as self-governing states in free association with new zealand finally that's... you have the ross dependency which is new zealand's claim to antarctica which of course under the antarctic treaty does not actually fall under their sovereignty but you know a lot of people like to say they have something they can't Whew. for a nation that doesn't even show up half the time on maps there's a lot going on here but wait if new zealand is just an island in the middle of the pacific which continent is new zealand a part of ah good question that is a question that has kind of stumped cartographers for centuries in the simplest sense categorically new zealand is part of the broader region known as oceania which is basically just australia plus everything else in melanesia micronesia and polynesia technically australia and new zealand together are called australasia however it's weird because new zealand doesn't lie on the same 
continental shelf as Australia. This has led to the consideration of New Zealand belonging to a newer subregion known as Zealandia, classified by some dude in the 90s as either a continental fragment or a microcontinent made up of a submerged continental crust shelf that expands all the way from New Caledonia to an empty spot in the ocean just south of the Campbell Islands. 93% of Zealandia is submerged with New Zealand being the largest protruding segment. Either way, however you want to. Dude. Well, there you go. That's that's confusing as hell right there. They don't know where it belongs. No. No one does. That's why they exclude it on all their maps. <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> Continents check. New Zealand. What? Oh, and it's already printed. Yeah. Leave it off. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Leave worry about us. <clears throat> You want to categorize it, New Zealand is kind of strange. Wait, go back <laughs> to the self-governing island thing. Do they belong to New Zealand or are they full countries? Good question. It's uh, kind of like this. Okay, guys, look, the British just kind of put you under my jurisdiction, so I guess that means you're all New Zealand citizens, okay? Yeah, but we all have our own languages and customs and want to write a constitution for ourselves with free association status. We're basically countries in our own right, but under your overarching sovereignty, I guess. Like, your military can come in for defense but otherwise we got everything else covered. I mean, guys, I have less than 2,000 people on less than five square miles of land <laughs> on three islands. Wow! I think I'll just become a dependent territory state. All right, fair enough. Two kind of countries with loose ties and one dependent territory country with stronger ties. Got it. Plus, hey, I became the first completely solar-powered nation in the world. Not exactly fully functional sovereign nation state by definition, but yeah, good for you. Some places of interest <laughs> in New Zealand might include the world's steepest street at a gradient of 38 degrees, the National <laughs> Museum, Auckland wow. Sky Tower. You can actually jump off of what? it. What? The Rotorua geysers and traditional Maori Village, Rainbow's End and Splash Planet, the International Antarctic Center, Hobbiton, so many wine fields like the ones in Marlboro, 90 Mile Beach, which is actually only 56 miles, <laughs> Waitomo Caves with glow worms, Frying Pan Lake, and the Meraki Spherical Boulders. And honestly, I could go on and on with all the natural wonders of this country, but that would take like 50 videos, and we gotta cram as much as we can in this one. So let's. Yeah, so already some fun things to check out. What's th that one little house? That's from, like, Lord of the Rings, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, Hobbiton. Hobbiton. Isn't that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's just talk about all the natural stuff of New Zealand, shall we? Now, New Zealand is an outdoors country, world-renowned for its mind-blowingly wonderful landscape displayed in a number of films and movies. Fun and fact, the Lord of the Rings gave them so much publicity and tourism money that they even have a Minister of the Rings in their parliament. Yes! Oh, do they now? Yes! The Yo! A Minister of the Rings! Yes! Where do I sign up for that job? That's Great title. Great title. Oh That's a my good pickup line. God, right there. who are I'm you? I'm Minister of the Rings, baby. Fucking Minister of the Rings. God. <laughs> For the episode, and I'm just reading off the teleprompter, so I figured you would know that. I did. First of all, the country is located in the Ring of Fire on the convergence of the Pacific and Australian plates that creates the mountainous southern Alps of the Southern Island. Here you can find the tallest peak, Mount Cook or Auraki, at over 12,000 feet or 3,700 meters, whereas across the Cook Strait, the smaller Kaweka Range can be found on the North Island. This, in return, makes the country subject to earthquakes and volcanic activity. There are about 83 known volcanoes of wow. all types, and wow. the largest active one being Ruapehu on North Island. Otherwise, you can see other volcanic wonders like the dormant Banks Peninsula on South Island and the eerily perfect circular Mount Taranaki on the west side of North Island. Just to skip away, you find the largest lake, Lake Taupo in the Taupo Caldera, one of the largest supervolcanoes on Earth. From there, the lake is drained by the longest river of the country, the Waikato. Now, New Zealand is interesting because due to its shape, there is no part of the country that is more than about 80 miles or so from the ocean. The flatter valleys on the sides of the mountains are where most people live and produce crops and livestock. Skip a little further west and you get the least inhabited and difficult to access, but most breathtaking part of New Zealand, the Fjordland. Steep cliffs plunging into the Tasman Sea with Milford Sound being the most popular spot and the only one accessible by road. New Zealand ranks as one of the top most landform diverse countries on earth, having everything from alpine forests, glaciers, geothermal geysers. They even have a small desert in the middle of North Island. And on some of the mm. coasts, you have tropical beaches with magnetic black sand containing magnetite. Seriously, wow. I still have some. Check it out. This is from Piha Beach in North Island. Whoa, it sticks wow. on. Now the one thing about New Zealand that set it apart upon discovery is that other than two species of bat, the entire island had no mammals prior to human encounter. Now, this is usually the part where Noah comes in, but he had a scheduling conflict that couldn't be here today, so therefore, I saw Min Random Hannah. 
<laughs> Anna, take it away. The country is a bird haven with over 200 species, over half endemic to New Zealand. And the funny thing, many of which are flightless. It's like the flightless bird capital of the world. Species such as the cockapo, <laughs> the world's only flightless nocturnal parrot, and they have more species of penguin than anywhere else on the planet. At one point a long time ago, they used to have the moa, a 12 foot tall monster until it was hunted by the native Mori to extinction. Then you have the national animal, the famous kiwi, a kiwi. flightless bird which comes in five forms on both islands. Known for their hair-like feathers, long beaks with nostrils making them some of the only few bird species that can smell. Otherwise, with flying birds, you have the kia, the world's only alpine parrot. And if you see one, they are curious creatures, unafraid of humans, that love to chew on shiny objects or rubber. Seriously, those guys <laughs> tried to steal my stuff one time. Outside of the bird world... So, someone, let us know, is it okay to have a kiwi as a pet? Other than like the long beak that they have, which could spell trouble, it's so cute. It, it's tiny. I don't want to be worried about people stepping on my kiwi. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's flightless. Yeah, it's flightless. Like, yeah. <laughs> kiwi, kiwi's a fruit, my guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could you could take one, a kiwi. Yeah. We do could they we? eat kiwis? Do kiwis eat kiwis? That's yes, that's question. our question. Do kiwis eat kiwis? Mm. Mm. You can find reptiles like the Turatara, which has a third parietal eye on the top of its head, or the giant Weta, the heaviest insect on Earth. Uh, Resource-wise, the country is known for its huge dairy farming and livestock industry. Jade or greenstone is a precious stone mined and sold here, as well often carved into jewelry or traditional Mori tools and ornaments. Besides all that, though, much of the country makes money through tourism, specifically outdoor tourism, specifically Queensland on South Island. This place offers everything from skydiving, paragliding, and zorbing, which, by the way, the Kiwis invented. And speaking of Kiwi inventions, food! Kiwis are without a doubt seafood folk. Native species like Gurnard, Hoki, Hake, Hapuku, Pawa, and Crayfish are made into numerous dishes. Cooked, raw, smoked, steamed, battered, and fried with chips. If that's- Alright, so, so I get, they got fish and chips over there. There you go. The only thing of that that I recognized was crayfish. Crawfish. Yeah. We have that. Specifically Louisiana. Yes. Cajun style cooking. It's not your thing. Some non-fishy kiwi dishes might include things like roast lamb, savory meat pies, hokey pokey ice cream, kiwi style burger, manuka honey, kumara, LNP drink, pavlova cake, and one of the most traditional Mori dishes, hangi. And speaking of cultural tradition, mm. we go to... Thank you, Hannah. All right, so before we get into that, I've heard that New Zealand lamb is like the best huh. of all of it. It's like, I'm definitely interested in, in that. I can't remember if I've had it before, but that's the only thing that I, I know about well, from there. Well, in a land where sheep outnumber people seven to one, you better know your stuff. Yeah, it's, it's not in uh, short supply over yeah. there. <laughs> They're trying to get rid of them, just yeah. like they, the Australia is trying to get rid of the emus. Yeah. Oh, it's like emus. Emus. Whatever. I'm American. It's, it's how we talk. Now, this is gonna be the best part of the episode because the people of New Zealand, known as Kiwis, are the biggest treasure you'll find. First of all, the country has about five million people and often ranks as one of the top three ease of business index countries in the world with the least corruption. At somewhere around 74%, the country is made up primarily of peoples of European descent, mostly of English, Scottish, and Irish ancestry. About 15% of the country is native Maori, 7% Pacific Islander, and the rest are mostly Asian of various countries like China, Korea, and Japan. Yes, by the way, it's pronounced Pronounced Maori, not Maori, Maori. They use the New Zealand dollar as their currency, they use the type I plug outlet, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, we all know that English is the most widely spoken language in the country with a distinct Kiwi dialect. To outsiders, it sounds just like the Australian one, but they swear it's different. They have some distinct Kiwi words. Here's my Kiwi buddy Jared explaining Bro, it's a beaut. I'm off to the dairy. Is that us? Yeah, nah, it's a cracker, but it's ages and we're in the wops. Egg, you're taking the piss. It's close as. Chuck on your jandals and it'll be a piece of piss. Whatever then, only if you stop racking me up. Stoked. Sweet as. Nonetheless, there are actually two other official languages of New Zealand, Māori and New Zealand Sign Language, making New Zealand the first country to adopt signing as an official language, even though only half of 1% knows it. Now let's talk- <laughs> Pretty cool for our deaf community, but also, <laughs> Goes back to the video that you talked about earlier. Yeah. About the decks. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so you can attest that uh, New Zealand and Australia have different Definitely. dialects. Different. Definitely different. Yeah. Yeah. I would just call them outdoor uh, platforms if I was <laughs> from New Zealand. Yeah. Outdoor That's platforms. Outdoor platforms. Uh talk about culture and the whole Maori thing. The Maori traditionally come from about a hundred or so iwi, or tribes, or peoples spread throughout both islands. Most in the north part of the country, the largest being the Ngapuhi at over a hundred thousand people. Their culture is a huge integral factor that plays into what it means to be Kiwi. I mean, instead of hello, you'll often hear the Maori word kiora as a greeting. Most schools teach the Maori language in elementary years and there are immersion schools as well. In addition, they have a few television channels and radio stations that speak almost entirely in Maori. Wow. Today, the majority huh. of Native speakers are found in the North Island, most heavily concentrated in the Northland and Gisborne and Bay of Plenty regions. And speaking of Maori, we cannot do this episode without talking about the haka. Almost everyone on the island knows one form of the traditional war dance performed by both men and women, known for its aggressive movements, loud chanting, and intimidating facial expressions. Very often it's performed at sporting events. The haka is not only used at games or as a means to intimidate, though. It can be used in a variety of situations, ranging from birthday parties, funerals, <laughs> even weddings where the people celebrate the union of two people happily, and everyone takes part in it, whether you are ethnically Maori or non-Maori. It's a tradition that really unites everyone on the island, regardless of race. Pretty cool, right? And now let's talk about tattoos. And actually, uh, let's have another co-host do this. Uh, let's see, which options do I have? Who can I select? And uh, let's see, Hannah already did one. Uh, why not Ken? <laughs> All right, Ken, take it away. You might occasionally come across someone with kirituhi or skin art or tamoko, which are face tattoos. There's so much information that goes into this, but basically, Mori tradition did not have a specific written script. Instead, they use a documented information and history through a series of wood carvings and tattoos. No two are alike, as each person's tattoos told a specific story of who they were. Generally, the left side is reserved for the father's lineage, and the right side, the mother's. The patterns can describe everything from tribe, rank, work, expertise, athletic accomplishments, and so on. In other news, huh. Kiwis are pretty athletic. You cannot talk about New Zealand without mentioning rugby. They are three-time World Cup championship winners, and often when they don't win, they place in the top three. Thank you, Ken. Feel free to follow him on Instagram. That's interesting. I mean, we, from the little bit of rugby we've checked out, New, New Zealand's team definitely comes up a lot. And, man, people like Post Malone would thrive down in New Zealand yeah. with all the face tats. Like, that's just that's just cool down there. That's just it tells a story. Thing. Their thing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, could you imagine? That could be, or maybe it is so normal. You go walk into, like, a bank and see that. Yeah. Here you wouldn't. No. Here there's no way in hell you have a face tattoo or in work in an office. Yeah, you Period. you would be seen as, like, a gang member and yeah. unemployable. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just move to New Zealand if yeah. that's you. Yeah. And now it's time to talk about history. In the quickest way I can summarize it, Bird Island, no humans. Maori come in from Polynesia, maybe sometime around the 1200s. Maori Pa settlements established. Moa bird is hunted to extinction. Tribal battles for land. Abel Tasman becomes the first European to come in contact. They kind of forget about it until the British come in by like 100 years later. For a while, they just kind of traded with the Maori. Inner tribal wars with the new weapons that they acquired by the Europeans. Missionaries, <laughs> British colony, New Zealand wars, Treaty of Waitangi, controversy with mistranslation. Self-government within the British Empire, women's suffrage, massive immigration, Immigration wave. World War One. they play a role in Pacific warfare against German-occupied Samoa. World War II, they play a role again in the Pacific, but this time against the Japanese in Papua New Guinea. Statute of Westminster Adoption Act. Muldoon years. 1980 reforms. 1990s and early 2000s, business really starts to boom. Earthquake in Christchurch. Some notable people from New Zealand or of Kiwi descent might include people like Hongihika, Honeheke, Te Puea Herangi, Maui Pomare, Potatao Te Ferro Ferro, Ernest Rutherford, Kate Shepard, Sir Apirana Ngata, Sir Edmund Hillary, Sir Peter Jackson, Jacinda Ardern, Russell Crowe, Jonah Lomu, Sir Colin Meads, Damfina Cooper, Flight of the Concords, Bruce McLaren, Catherine Mansfield, Lord, oh, and the meme page Dolan Dark, I was told. Yeah, quite a few cool <laughs> Kiwis. <laughs> what? That's, that's, that's interesting. I thought Lord was from Scotland, but interesting. Now, now I know she's from New Zealand. Interesting. And, and the McLaren guy, uh... Who else? Flight of the Concords. Flight of the Concords. They're yeah. from New Zealand? Yeah, apparently. And I also heard that Keith Urban was born in New Zealand, but moved to Australia at age five. I got it. So Doesn't count. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> He's out there, which brings us to our next segment, the Kiwi Crew. They're friends. The friend zone. 
All right, diplomatically speaking, New Zealand, for lack of a better term, is basically like Australia's Canada. They get along with nearly everyone, and unless if it's a rugby match, it's hard to harbor any animosity towards them. And even if it is a rugby match, it's like, okay, you guys can win. Just do that haka thing again. First of all, as part of numerous international organizations, New Zealand has harnessed an international network of alliances since its inception. For one, South Africa, Argentina, Uruguay, and Chile have had close links as members of the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. These five nations kind of act as like the southern gateways to Antarctica, and they hold a high level of responsibility when it comes to monitoring the South Seas. China has an interesting, kind of good, but kind of controversial relationship with New Zealand. Not only have Chinese immigrants been living in New Zealand since the 19th century, but in 2008, a bold move with a free trade agreement was established, and today they are the second largest import and export partner. The problem is the housing market. Many Chinese investors have bought out property in metropolitan areas that remain unused and empty for the purpose of real estate appreciation. This has left many Kiwis unable to live in the houses in their own country. This has frustrated many of them for a long time, leaving them to ask the government for reforms in foreign investment policy. As a former British colony, they've always been closely linked to the UK, and UK citizens, often Scottish, choose to migrate and live in New Zealand. Problem is distance. New Zealand is one of the furthest members in the Commonwealth from the UK, and over time the UK relations waned as the UK paid more attention to the EU. Nonetheless, they've grown up, don't need to hold mommy's hand anymore, and they can handle their own affairs. Then we get to the quadfecta, the USA, Canada, and Australia. There is somewhat of an unspoken, unbreakable bond between these four. New Zealand has fought alongside the US in almost every major global event from the 20th century and on. There was a slight hiccup in the ANZUS security treaty in the 80s in which they decided to initiate a nuclear-free zone in their territorial waters. Nonetheless, relations are still strong and they are considered one of the closest allies. Canada and New Zealand are very close though. They both think very similarly and are both common Commonwealth nations, with the same queen as their technical head of state. Both share similar views on a variety of issues. Both are the smaller versions of a bigger neighbor that gets all the attention. Business, trade, and tourism is strong <laughs> between them, and in a way, they kind of love each other for all these reasons. Hmm. When it comes to their best friend, however, as much as they love to poke fun, mock, ridicule, and spit on each other, they cannot deny that Australia is the closest. Australia even has a clause in its constitution that allows New Zealand to become a part of their country if they should ever want to for whatever huh. reason. Although New Zealand is like, thanks, but no. <laughs> Australia is not only the largest trading and business partner, but also has the closest history and culture. The two have a unique trans-Tasman agreement that states that citizens of each country can migrate and have automatic residency. The two go hand in hand. Awesome. However, when Australia isn't looking, Canada kind of slips in and they kind of go off on secret dates. In conclusion, <laughs> as humanity's last major expedition, you can imagine how the first settlers must have felt when they approached on this unknown world of glaciers, volcanoes, glowing caves, geysers, and giant 12-foot tall bird monsters. You don't need Lord of the Rings. New Zealand already is a real life fantasy. All right. <laughs> cool, man. Very cool. nice. So, New Zealand is to Australia what Canada is to the United States. But in a cooler <laughs> way. I mean, Canada is just hanging out citizenships like that. No, no. I don't think there's any. I think Canadians can't just go over and, and leave each other's country and be cool with it. Australia no. and New Zealand, they could be cool with it. Not anymore. Not anymore. Back in the way back day. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it's formative. Automatic two thumbs up for that one. Very watchable video. Yeah, yeah. You like, were you were earlier. Well, I mean, it just does a good job speaking the facts in his mind and and, and enough and more quick than I thought. Yeah. And it's your attention. It does. He does. It, they, know, they they do a really good job of keeping your attention. For I that like one. I cut away is the addition. Like I like it's a really well done video. Yeah, yeah. So. Definitely want to come back and watch again to kind of catch everything. Yeah. But uh, let us know what you think. Um. New Zealanders, dude, yeah. how much of this is right? How much of this is wrong? What did he miss? What uh, what can you expand upon? And have any of you either traveled there or, or I mean, I'm it's a lot of people from there. Yeah. But you from the UK, have you traveled there? How long of a trip is that? Yeah, it must be a long it, trip. How <laughs> long of a trip is that? Because that's <sighs> kind of out to go. That's a long trip. Yeah, I mean, to have a stop over and say, I don't know, Sydney first. I don't oh, know yeah. what, what what part of the country that is. I have but. no idea. Like, where do you? I go. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. Let us know how long a trip that is. Yeah. Yeah. We're curious. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, and hitting that bell, and sharing with your friends. Definitely, guys. Until next time, wash your hands, scrub your toes, wipe your ass, blow your nose, embrace the suck, unplug, and go on an adventure. And happy New Zealand Day. Later, fellas. We could be that mistake. Let's do this.